Blog Talk Radio. April 17, 2020. Yours truly, Raven 98 here, along with... Good morning, TNT. It is another Friday. We're still here, and things are still moving forward. So, while it's not good Friday, it is a good Friday. All right, Ray, do we see anything out? No updates went out. No updates went out. I'm trying to think. Should some updates have gone out? Oh. Um, I got to think about it for a minute. Because y'all know how we have to get started here. There's good news, and there's good news. Um, so where do we start? All right. Uh, nothing's going on with the banks. Still nothing happening here. Nobody's getting ready for the RV, anything else. That part is not happening at the moment. Still going to happen. We're still going to make a whole lot of money out this year, which is great. What is happening, though, is Iraq is about to have a prime minister. Now, we know that and we can believe that because everything they're saying is saying that. (laughs) And why are they about to have a prime minister this time? There's two reasons. One is if they don't do it, they all lose their job. So I was going to send that to you. After that, they're all out if they don't pass him because he's the last one. And people have been concerned for months and years about how long can this go on? Can they just keep doing this over and over again or forever, putting somebody in? Nope, this is it. On May the 12th, it's the last day. After that, they got 60 days. They have totally new elections. So they all will lose their jobs if this doesn't happen by May the 12th. But we know they don't want that. So we got to look at the big picture and see what's going on. And that is the prime ministers want to keep their job. Iran wants to keep them in place. The U.S. wants to shut things down. So everybody is basically, in, in basically it's Iran and the U.S., are both going with plan B. Plan B. Which is a good thing because we're moving forward. So what Kazemi has decided to do and why they put him in position because the U.S. likes him, Iran likes him, is he's decided to go back to the quota system, not fight Maliki, Amiri, Sadar, the Kurds, any of them, but give them all exactly what they wanted, and that is their old positions, their old number of ministers, and whoever they want. He's just going to put the government back together and say we have a functioning government. So nothing else can happen. That They all don't lose their jobs. They all don't lose their power, and Iran has to build all over again. So everybody's giving in a little bit, like we said, had to happen in order for this to ever end. We're at that end point. And I know it took us forever to get here. So he's definitely going to go through this time because he's doing exactly what everybody wants, giving them the ministerial positions that they want, again, so they have a functioning government. When is this going to happen is the question. Is it going to be May the 12th? Or... Is it going to be, as they're announcing now, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday? They say they're going to take the vote next week. They want to take it prior to Ramadan, which starts on the 23rd. So they want to get it done and have a functioning government at that time. So we'll see if it really happens. I mean, there's still some back and forth and negotiating with some of the positions. The Kurds have maintained they want their 17% which the last two nominees have agreed to. So we'll see if that part happens. But anyway, it's looking good, guys. We needed that to happen. I told you guys we needed that to happen in order for us to see an RV because we need that to happen. 
all this other nonsense these people are telling you about the RV today, tomorrow, and and, and Trump signed something last night or was supposed to sign it last night for the RV to go through today. I'm sorry, that's not reality, not happening. But we are moving forward, and that's what really matters. It is going to happen, and the timeline is getting ever closer. So I put out articles today and yesterday, again, saying they're going to do the 2020 budget. If you look at the article today again, that they put out, they said we're going to pass the 2020 budget, but we can't not do that until the new prime minister is appointed. It's right there in black and white. Same thing we've been saying. It can't happen until the new prime minister is appointed. Their plan for it, though, is what we have to be concerned about. Because they plan on doing a five-month budget. Five months. They say they're going to do a 2020 budget, but only for five months. And I'm going to ask you guys to do the math, because you have to do the math yourself. If you do a 2020 budget for five months, which five months would that be? If you're telling the people the budget is only going to apply for five months, which five months would that be? And more important than that, then when would we look at passing the budget? If it's only going to be for five months. So they're saying the new government will look at the budget. It should take a month is what they're saying today, to approve a new budget, even though it's for five months, even though it supposedly is just for paying salaries and paying their debts. So that's budget talk. But we can look for something to happen. You guys tell me when the five months is up or when the five months is applied or even when it begins. Because so those are the questions that need to be answered. You know, another good thing that happened today is they're saying that oil should go back up to $50 a barrel before the end of the year. As long as all the countries abide by the new OPEC rule, they think oil will go back up to $50 a barrel before the end of the year. We know we needed it to get between 30 and 40, with 40 being ideal to do the RV but it can be done anywhere in there. So again, we're right on track to see this thing happen and get it through. Yeah. The one thing that a lot of you have been concerned with, no, it's not the five months that passed. The budget got to be for five months for the rest of the year, <laughs> not the five months that have already passed. Anyway, uh, unless I'm wrong, I could be wrong. It happens every now and then, but <laughs> we'll see. But, uh, oh, the people, the people themselves are in an uproar today. I'm going to read what you, exactly what they're doing so you guys can get it. It says, uh, citizens back in the streets, defying curfew, end the virus, burning tires, breaking windows, Angry at Kasami giving in to the quota system because that's what he did. Gave in, took them all the way back to where they started from, and the citizens are mad about it. They've been demonstrating since yesterday. They're telling the government, don't think the virus will stop us. Don't think this uh, situation with the economy will stop us. We don't care how long it takes. We're going to be back. And they came back in Avengers today. Now, this was yesterday. They're saying you still better heed what we said and what we did because it's going to be worse if you don't. So we can still look for some changes. The U.S. can still look for changes. Iran can. They're just doing it with a budget, with a functioning government, 
and the citizens still will have a voice from that respect. They don't have a vote, but they do have a voice. So things are definitely moving as far as uh, Iraq is concerned. Now, they say they're going to vote Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, which will be good because they'll have a government. They say it'll take a month for the budget to go through, which would be good, because that means the middle of May. Things we're talking about doing anyway, right? By the middle of May, they could have a budget, if not before. They could have an emergency budget probably before that, but the budget for the five months. They say it'll take a month, and we'll say, hopefully, I'm sure Danny will come on and give you guys some bad news about the price of oil today what's going on in the U.S. And actually, the price of U.S. oil is the lowest it's been since 2002. First time it fell below $20, $18.98. Sorry, Danny. Anyway, uh, along with that, that's everywhere. The market goes up and down. But as the glut shrinks, the price will go up, will be ready. We didn't expect this RV. I didn't expect it anyway, nobody about you guys, until the middle of next month anyway, or even the first part of June, based on those things that we said. First of all, that prime minister could be drug out all the way to the 12th of May. Hopefully it won't. Hopefully they'll go ahead and get it through next week so we can be done with that. That will be two of the four things we needed. That will be oil has resolved itself, and we're just waiting for its natural rise, which will happen. That will be the prime minister and the government's in place, which we've been fighting for seven months now, which is holding us up. So that will mean there's nothing left but the budget. Iraq's in a terrible situation. Their economy is down like everybody else. Their production is going to be down by a million barrels a day. So they have even less to count on, okay? The U.S. has told them they are not going to uh, renew the agreement to get electricity and water from Iran. So it's supposed to end at the end of the month. So we'll see how that works out. But they're saying they're not going to renew it because they've given them opportunities to find other sources, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, somebody else that they told them they could go through, and they should have been setting that up, even though it's not set up. They're saying they're not going to extend it this time. You know, it went from a 90-day to a 60-day to a 45 days, which is supposed to be up at the end of the month. But we'll see what happens. But is that now part of Plan B to force them to not rely on Iran anymore? Can they do that? Yeah, and this is why, guys, during the shutdown, Iraq closes borders. They shut off Iran because that's where the virus was coming to. Well, guess what they found out by doing that? They really don't need Iran's imports to survive. They start using their own natural resources. Their markets are still full, but they're getting it from Iraqi farms, from Iraqi people. And they're saying, hey, we're not starving. We still have resources, and the prices didn't change. So we really don't need Iran and everything they're giving us. They're surviving off us. We're not surviving off them, but they just realized it because it took this pandemic and shutting down of the borders and the imports and everything to realize that they could stand on their own two feet. But now they do. So that may change the rules a little bit. may change the message a little bit as the people start to understand that. So, you know, the pandemic was bad and is bad, continues to be bad. But people are finding new ways of doing things, even here in the U.S., a whole bunch of new ways of doing things, working around it, but so are other countries. And this one happens to work in our benefit. So it's something good to look at. That's where we are. I'm trying to think. 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is what they're saying before Ramadan. So we don't have to wait till the 12th. Get it done. The budget in the five months. So far, one person has told me where it starts and stops. And I think they're completely wrong. (laughs) But anyway, they're going to approve a five-month budget. It says for the rest of the year. (laughs) For the rest of the year. I didn't tell you guys that. That's a big hint right there. For the rest of the year. We still need to figure out the details. And the biggest question is, can the new rate be in that budget for the rest of the year? Because they didn't say an emergency budget. They said the 2020 budget for the rest of the year. But they wanted it to apply to paying the bills, paying people's salaries, because the number would enable them to do a budget just for that, without the jobs, without the construction, without all the imports, they could do that and leave the rate the same. Oil goes up, and they could have a slush fund by the end of the year. But is that the plan is the question. They also could change the rate and do that because the timing is right. Their economy would look a lot better. Investors would be chomping at the bit again because they have a government. The people may not riot and demonstrate in the street because now they have money. So there's a lot of things to look at and say when, where, and how are they going to do this. But the fact they are announcing they are going to do it, it shouldn't take more than 30 days. Put it in the middle of May. We could see an RV then or anywhere within June, but still have to do that number four issue. And that is, when does the virus die down enough, excuse me, that global economies can come back? That's what we're looking for. All right, that's enough of me. Let's hear from you guys. What's going on? Ray, did I put you to sleep? Hello? Hello? Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I got to tell you Can something you first, man. Yeah, yeah, I got to tell you something first, though. Somebody sent me Uh-oh. a text on Wednesday, and they said, your brother is really mean. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, I know that. Just so you know. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> well, I guess I'm going to have to live up to it now. Let's see. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> New Money 28 says, now that they have a new PM, how likely will it be that we actually get an RV this time since we've seen several PMs come and go with no RV? Well, you pretty much addressed that, yep. unless you want to say something else. Nope. First of all, let's okay. get to the PM next week, and then we'll see what the budget brings. That's all. Yep. Okay. Pilot Jim says, Does the COVID virus hold it up as well? Yes. That was the fourth thing I said, the virus. And it's not the virus because the virus is what shut down the economy. It's what shut down the borders. It is what has people at home on the curfews. Guys, we need them to be off curfew to go to the bank. I mean, theirs is going to be electronically for us to go. We need the money to go for the economy to come back. We need everybody to be off curfew. Well, we don't need to chance everybody's life while the virus is out there trying to do it. So we need it to die down first, come up with a vaccine or something. But, yes, it is affecting the RV at this time. It's going to affect the timing of it. Absolutely. Okay, it continues with five months through May 30th? Okay. So, once again, I'll tell you guys what the first one said. I gave you the thing. It says five months for the rest of the year. Okay. All right. Look, we're not going to get Look, here's the option five months for the rest of the year. Go to December and count back five months. 
December, November, October, September, August. That means it only covers through August. So the RV is not going to be until August. If it's only going to cover five months through the rest of the year, unless instead of physical year, they're talking about physical year, which means what? October all the way down. That means it will go in what? May, June, July, August, September, through the end of the year. Remember, last year they were trying to do the RV with the 2020 budget effective October the 1st. So the five months would have to be May through October. So now that's over. <laughs> okay. May through October, if it says five months for the rest of the year. Wouldn't make sense to do it next month. It wouldn't help them none. Say the 2020 budget. And it's not effective until August. So what do we do for May, June, July? Nothing. No one that is out there. So I'm All looking right. forward to be in the middle of next month. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. That's what they're looking for. And they're saying it's going to take them 30 days for the new government to review it, which it probably won't. And we'll go from there. The only thing but, you know, we're, again, waiting to see and hear is, do they change the rate like was planned with a shortened budget? Or is it just an emergency budget that just deals with those two things? So that they're not really saying at the moment. But we'll figure it out. It's what we do. Figure it out. All and right, you know, there's, there's something else just past the middle of next month. What, your birthday? There you go. Yep. See that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Well, go. that was it for the board. That was it for the board questions. So now let's get the people questions. 404 area code. All right. First. Hi, Tony, and hi, Ray. Kim, hi. Thanks good for the connecting of the dots. Good morning to you and good afternoon to you, Ray. Um, you've pretty much addressed uh, some of the concerns and questions that I had, because right now, to, to me, it's more the mindset of the demonstrators uh, and how they are going to really kind of be brought into the fold, because they, they seem to be, you know, looking at this more like this is their um, final government, not that it's a caretaker government. It's more of the, the important thing is to get the government in place so that they can address all of these other concerns, prime of which also would be getting the new elections, and that's when the demonstrators can voice all of their wishes, you know, through the electoral process. And it's sort of, uh, is anything on the horizon from what your folks are, are telling you of trying to get that point across to the demonstrators that it's in their best interest that this government be in play, even though he is doing the quota system because the government isn't supposed to be in play for you know, as a you know a temporary government for no more than a year, and they were saying the elections they were wanting to have by the end of the year. I, I was just curious. I'm that this is the quandary that I find myself in in pondering that. Okay. I don't think anybody is addressing the citizens at all because of the curfew, the lockdown, they're not having groups out there. Nobody's doing things on the television. We're seeing it because right now I think they're trying to take advantage of the citizens and putting this together because okay. there's still some advantages to them doing this. They do need a government to operate or they all lose. We all know that. Right. They all absolutely lose. So they got to give them that. I think the people are demonstrating now saying, you didn't give us anything, though. The last two guys were even going to give us some ministerial positions. He was going to guarantee us our jobs, the money, the investment. Now, this guy's not even doing that. He just went straightly back to the quota. I'm going to give all these guys what they wanted, and we're going to put the government back in place like it was when Marty walked out. Because that's what they're doing, just putting it back in place. Nothing until the budget passes and the laws and those things are in there gives the citizens anything. The citizens are coming out saying, we're telling you we don't like it, 
we see it, we don't like him. And if we don't see something when this happens, then you're going to see something. It's basically what they're putting out there right now. It's going to be worse if we don't see the benefits we protested for. So I'm thinking they're going to give them those. They can't say, wait another year, and then we're going to give it to you. But this government is supposed to be in place for a year. Initially, when they thought this all happened in January, they thought there would be a vote before the end of the year. That's not going to happen. They're not even organized like that. They don't even know how to put a real vote together. They haven't divided up their territory, who's running for what, uh, you know, and how their system's even going to work yet. And that's what they've been saying. We can't do it in this time frame. We don't even know how to do it. Somebody's going to have to come over here and explain to us what the U.N. has said they will, how to put this election together. That's not going to happen overnight, even though they say if they don't invite, uh, I mean, uh, vote uh, Kazemi in, that they have to have elections within 60 days. Well, what kind of elections could they have in 60 days when they're not even prepared to have an election in a year, unless they go back and use their old system, which is just as corrupt. So nobody wants any of that to happen. I think the people will understand, and that's the best thing they can do for them, is vote him in, do the budget, let the money flow again, and try to appease them while they work towards getting them everything else. Well, it's also the sort of thing that, that if, if in fact, and we would presume that the case is, is that the revised, uh, revalued uh, rate is in that, that budget, and they start to see it reflected in their, their wages and the like, they might not be out demonstrating to the extent that they, they have been because they've at least been pacified a, a bit. So, you know, everyone would somewhat come out in a win-win position. And I'd like to think that they will get this thing done prior to, to Ramadan, which, uh, you know, might get their act in gear that they are doing things for the five months. And if it ends up being at this five and a half or six months to the end of the year, they'll just stretch that five months worth of value to the get, get to the end of the year. That's the Pollyanna in me. But whenever this happens, we know that that's what he will tell us. <laughs> what a TNT super fantastic uh, pay it forward project it is going to be. And you notice that I'm not ending up saying 10 day post RV because it might not be 10 days. It might be 12 or 14. But we'll uh, ask you to be telling us that that special date. Who knows? It might be May 19th. Wouldn't that be something? There you go. Woo. I know. I know. That would be a day. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> uh, I mean, Have a great, you. great finale Friday and a good weekend, and hopefully this may be our last call pre-RV. Who knows? Let's see. All right. Thanks again. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hey, mm-hmm. now, now that really was Pollyanna right there. I'm telling you. I know. We're not even there. I told you I'm becoming a rate and date person, you know. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Two eight one area code. You are on. Well, hey Ray and Tony, how you guys doing? Hey, I'm fantastic, sir. Super fantastic. And yourself? Good. I'm good. I'm good. Well, Tony, you did hit on my question, which was going to be regarding the budget, and. My question to you were going to be, was it, in your opinion, temporary or or the original budget that they were referring to? But my question is now, since you did touch on some of it, is that if it's only for five months, what happens after the five months if, you know, they're only doing this to pay, you know, certain things out of that budget? Does that rate if I mean I'm do we do you in your opinion think that a rate will have to be in there some kind of rate whether it's program or market rate there has to be a rate in there or no well there has to be a rate I mean whether it's the one we have today or or that I mean it has to be a rate in your budget to come up with the numbers okay right so our really Mm -hmm. our only question is what we said does the five months go from May 
to October or from August to December. So we know their budget, just like our budget every year, ends on 30 September, and we start with the new budget one October. So they're doing the same thing when it says five months. So mm -hmm. is the RV going to be next month in May, or is the RV going to be in October like it was supposed to be last year when it comes right. out? Is the contract for oil in June going to be at a rate that can justify the RV next month? Or right. the fact that they said oil is going to be back up based on their production and what they've cut down should be back up to $50. And they say, okay, we can do our budget at 40 The $10 will come in surplus through now through the end of the year. So there's a lot of options. We just have to see which one they take. Which I one? think they're right. in position that we'll see the RV more than likely because of the global economy and what it's going to mean to everybody. I think we're probably going to see it in the middle of May or first part of June or whenever Corona lets us back in the streets. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, so that kind of answers my question because I was going to say, well, what does it matter regardless if it's December or whatever, but you just explained all of that. So um, with the way that at least we know as far as the states here in the U.S., look, it, it's looking like they're going to be opening up the economy little by little in some states, depending on the hot spots and things like that. It looks like if they do that, then the um, opportunity of us going to the bank could not be until the whole U.S. is open up and working. Do you think that? Because I don't see how they could possibly be sending us to the bank with it staggering like that. What do you think? I don't think. I, th I mean, would they have to open the whole U.S. up and it's running, everybody's uh, running where they... Right. I think, yeah, they have to open up the entire U.S. in order to open the market up so everybody can go in and, and get the rates that they're supposed to get, okay? If they're saying they want the Internet group done in 10 days, we're all across the U.S. We're not all right. in Texas or New York or California. So it has to be where everybody can go take that opportunity. And, yeah. I mean, it's what I do. Not only that, it has to be where all the banks are open. It has to be where all right. of us can sit across the desk from somebody and negotiate. It, it, mm -hmm. You can't open it at one state at a time. Just think, if they opened up New York and said, hey, New York, you guys can all go and RV your currency. Go ahead to the bank, and the rate is $4. It's brought up. How does Forex market, all of them go jump in and raise that rate up to $10, $15, come back down when nobody else in the country is participating. Nobody else is right. fine. But even worse than that, let's say they did. But New York, you can go RV your currency. All the rest of us can't. Does that make our currency more valuable? Just because it opened up, do we all run out and buy more? Or is our house because the market's not open to us? That, or do we all just simply lose out and raise holy hell? And now we're all protesting, Brian, because we're at our bank standing outside the door saying, I want my $100 million. I want right. my $10 million. I want my $100,000 because guess what? I need it because we're still shut down. We're still jobless. We still need money. We're still getting, I was almost called them welfare checks. What do you call un Unemployment checks. You know, you know what? And, and, and somebody <laughs> thinks that's going to work out. <laughs> you know? I don't care yeah. what they call it. They should call it a homeless <laughs> You just send me my money. <laughs> <laughs> I want my money. I don't care what you call it. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> but you know, it, and that's what I was thinking. So it really, I mean, it matters, but it doesn't matter when Iraq RVs, whether it's December or September or whatever, because it looks like it's going to be a time before the whole U.S. opens up. This is going to take some time. So even our state, our governor is on the on the news now, or he was giving up a few guidelines and what's getting ready to happen on how they're going to be opening up Texas. And it's not going to be all at once. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to be staggering as well on some of the cities as to how they're going to be abiding by these new rules. So it's going to take some time for not just country and the other countries, including Iraq and them. So, it, 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 yeah, it's going to be a little while. That's right. It's not just us, this. guys. Yeah, I know yeah. everybody wants everything to be about us all the time, but it's not. There are other yeah. countries involved, other economies right. involved. They have to mm-hmm. be open. Not only do they have to be open, because it doesn't make any difference. They can RV their money. But if we're not importing, yeah. exporting, if we're not back to doing a global business, it doesn't make any difference. Because right. everybody's just holding their money in their hand. And if the countries right. aren't mm-hmm. going to make money with this money, it's going to grow. Why would they do it now? Doesn't right. make sense. Yep. Doesn't make okay. sense. Because, you know, I'm tempted to go to the bank now. I just got money sitting up in there and can't do nothing with it. So, what? you know what I'm saying? It's like crazy. You can't go to the store. You can't buy anything. I'm tired of buying groceries, and, and, and I don't want them to spoil. So, ain't no use in going. And I'm not going to go and hoard any more tissue. I'm not doing that. You see what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's what to stay home. You can't buy nothing with it unless you go online maybe and order some stuff. But even that's going to take some time to get to you. So we just have so to have what? patience. You, you hoarding tissue? You the one calling nope. everybody else to use paper towels? I'm not hoarding it, but I'm not going to go buy anymore. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I have, look, uh, Tony, I got, I got two big packs in there now, like 12 packs. That's all I have in my in my deal right now. They're 12 packs. I know some people that have six and seven of those 12 packs. That's ridiculous. I'm not going to buy any more. I'm going to wait till that runs out. Then I'll go get some more. <laughs> Let yeah, you know what? Have you know what was killing me is I never understood that when this whole thing started, Said, really? Is, is that going to be the new goal? Is that going to be the new <laughs> currency? Toilet paper? <laughs> I can't believe everybody's just backing up on toilet paper. I mean, that was mind boggling to me. I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> me too. And you, and you better not go in the store and act like you want to get the last roll and somebody else standing there. You're going to have a fight. You better just leave it alone because they're going to beat you up if you try to get the last pack standing there. So. I don't even worry about it. Oh I go on my business. So, all right. Well, it looks like we're going to be waiting a minute. It's coming. It's just we got to have patience because all of this other stuff is going on. So I'm not mad at that. I'm not upset with that. I'd rather for us to be safe going into the banks and other, you know, even going to spend the money than get, having it and can't do anything with it or getting sick on That's it. That's right. Yeah. All right. All right. Have a great day. Good weekend. Right, Thank have you. A good weekend. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Bye-bye. 972, Harry Code. Danny, you're on. Hello, Ray. Hello, Tony. Hey, sir. Danny in Dallas. What are you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? Hey, I am so excited. <clears throat> uh, uh, it was good to hear a uh, bus lady. Uh, bus lady, I got a little information for you. Governor Abbott just shut down school for the rest of the year, so your bus driving is uh, definitely put on hold. <laughs> uh, just announced a few minutes ago, but I, I'm excited about a couple of things, Tony, and it's uh, it's all good news. What you just told us this morning about the five month that's that's excellent. About the prime minister, that's excellent. But I was uh, curious about a specific subject. I'm getting a lot of feedback here. You guys all right? Yep, I'm good. Yep. Okay. We don't hear it. Uh, yeah, all right, good. Um, 
We talked about the foreign reserves that the U.S. holds in Iraqi dinar. Obviously, that was a negotiation thing that we're a, we're a prime, maybe the prime supporter of Iraq. By the way, Tony, oil right now at this moment is $25.07. It hadn't been this high in uh, more than a week. It opened at 17.61, and it's up right at uh, seven and a half dollars. That's a good thing, really good thing. That's a so great thing in one day. Yes. Yeah. Taking some slack up. That's good, especially if okay. we would be uh, moving at thirty dollars. It's going to fifty, but it's been uh, since about uh, the early part of February since it was fifty. So hey, it's all it's all good. But getting back to the reserves. It's been said, I don't know that you guys have said it, but I picked it up along the lines over the last 11 years, that the U.S. holds between 2 and 4 trillion dinar. Now, that, that's uh, for, for services rendered, services to be paid, and who knows if that's accurate. I went to, the, to Wikipedia, looked up foreign reserves, and I got a list of more than 190 countries and exactly how much the U.S. holds in reserve. Everything from uh, like three trillion plus that we hold for uh, China. And we got a little over a trillion for Japan. These are reserves. Now, I got that, I, I went on down to Iraq and the number there, I know numbers get really lost on a, on a verbal call like this, but the numbers there are 47.02 million dollars in dollars worth of dinar. Now, I don't I don't know what, what you paid for your dinar, but I know what I paid for my dinar when I first got started in 2009. I paid a, a dollar would buy me 1170 dinar. That was the standard price for a long period of time. I have a friend that bought it a couple of years before me, and he his dollar bought 1700 dinar, but I got it uh, a dollar's worth of dinar bought me 1170 dinar. It doesn't matter how many dinar I have. If you take that 1170 dinar equally a dollar, and then you re, uh, revalue that to $3.61, just to be modest, that's the number we all work with, that's the revalue rate, you can multiply that 1170 dinar by 300 or $3.61 my dollar with the exchange will buy $4,223 just rounding it up now that's a dollar 4,223 and we get lost in the numbers so I imagine there's some on this call that will rewind this and catch it again guess what the amount of value is for the U.S. foreign reserves at $47.02 billion. It is close to $200 trillion. Now, we can argue about that stuff, and that doesn't matter. But I find myself, like Bus Lady said and, and probably several others on the call, Looking at a, a weird time, the last two months have decimated um, our, our, our nation. We're at a point where 25 million people have lost their jobs, and there'll be more next week. How is this ever going to be pulled out? Guess what? Our current situation is so close with our revaluing and with the government coming into Iraq that if this happens in the next little bit, our multi-multi-trillion dollars worth of money coming out of the U.S. Treasury to support and, and uh, keep us afloat as a nation will be more than compensated when this holdings, the holdings that we have, are used to negotiate almost $200 trillion worth and that's just dealing with, with Iraq. Let's cut it in half. Let's cut it by 10 more. Let's, let's just keep cutting it. And we're, we're in a situation to where I'm so excited about the possibility of this ending next week, next month, two months, five months from now. 
and suddenly all this money that's just getting flushed down the toilet practically, bus lady, what's that toilet? The that is getting flushed down the toilet and no way to make it back will be totally compensated by what has happened in Iraq and our involvement with it. Now, I'm going to end there, but uh, that that makes me excited. I was forlorn and 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 frustrated about so much money going out to keep people afloat, to keep businesses going, to survive. And I'm looking at the things that we're looking at, and everybody on this call has counted significantly on their investment in a, in dinar and dong and, and uh, various currencies. The end of this will be an amazing, amazing situation. So that's my two cents. Don't tell me I'm wrong, but feel free to to come uh, to to com- uh, comment on it. What do you think? I think you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. That wasn't part of the instruction. <laughs> well, okay. You what you <laughs> so, if uh, we have forty five million dollars worth of their money. Billion and dollars worth of dinar. Millions or billions? Billion with a B. Forty-seven point zero okay. two billion is what they have on Wikipedia for Iraqi foreign reserves. Okay. So that's in dollars. Let me think. We bought a million dinar for a thousand dollars, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that thousand dollars is going to equal four million dollars. Yes. All right. So yes. we had to do what was the math? We turned one thousand into four million. So you're gonna yes. turn into forty five billion into four hundred times that, right? Or four thousand yes. times that. Nope, <clears throat> or four hundred thousand times that is the numbers that you use to come out with that. Uh, yes, I'm, roughly speaking, I, I use the dollars that I paid for my currency and compared it right. to the U.S. Treasury. Okay, and and you did a lot of numbers. I just tried to make it easier for people by going yeah, yeah. with the one thousand dollars for a million dinar, so we can. Yeah. We can do it that way, and it would make the, the numbers kind of easier, I think. So we're going to go 400,000 times 45 billion and come out with a number. And we're going to say we have that much dinar, 200 trillion dinar, which I don't know any country anywhere in the world that has 200 trillion of any currency. I don't. We don't okay, even have it. I understand. Okay. We don't We're have at 200 20 trillion. trillion dinar. We got two, two to four trillion. Yeah, and, and I mean, but you're saying what it's going to be worth afterwards. We're having yeah. a hard time printing extra two trillion right now to bring our deficit up to 20 trillion. But you and know, it's you're not saying printing. that the dinar is going to be 10 times that 200 trillion. I, I'm counting on dinar being 1,170 times what I paid for it. <laughs> oh, if I spent a dollar well, and bought 1,170. Okay. So it's it's complicated, okay. but that's why I think several are going to go back and listen to this call. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just the numbers. Now I will say this though, and we've all known it. We've been involved in any time. The whole premises behind revaluing the dollar, the U.S. getting involved, back when this whole thing was put together, was to use it just like Kuwait, because it's going to be enough to wipe out the U.S. deficit and let us start over. It was yeah. going to do that, and it is still going to be that. It's going to wipe out yeah. the $20 trillion. Just like it wiped out the 16 trillion, 17 trillion back when Clinton was there, and the economy just took off. We're going to see right. all of that 
again. I just don't know that it's going to be two hundred trillion. Okay, because then we'll never ever trillion. be broke again. I mean, look how many years it took us to get our deficit to twenty trillion. But that's okay. The numbers are going to work. The purpose is going to work. We are all going to be in better positions than we would have been in 10 years ago. Because I said it before, if this would have happened 10 years ago, all of us would have been involved in that crash, in the market crash. All of us would be involved in that recession right now. All of us would have lost probably 80, 90% of what we've worked for this long or waited for. If we would have got caught up in this, we'd be just like everybody else. But instead, we're going to be the fresh start. We're going to have everything we ever wanted and the availability to go so much further. So thank you for looking forward. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. You guys have a great day. Talk okay, you thank you, sir. All right, thank you, sir. 951, area code, you are on. Yes, good morning, and, uh, good morning, sir. Hey. Yeah, you already answered my question in the beginning there and stuff, you know, because I was just wondering if you just had any kind of idea when this possibly might have a chance of going, and you already answered that question. But I stayed on because uh, I don't know if it's on your news or not, but it came across my phone, and I've seen it a couple different places where there was this guy that bought $10,000 worth of toilet paper and hand sanitizer, and he wanted to return it, and he was denied the return, of course. So I just thought that was just kind of funny. So that's the only reason I stayed on. So Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Sir. Why, why did he want to return it? He didn't think he could use that much? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. You know, I, I figured he probably bought it to probably, you know, inflate the prices and make money off of it and found out he can't do that. So I mean, might as well sell it online and get your money back or something, but I don't know what the, what his deal was. I mean, it was just funny, you know, I thought. Well, okay. Thought. So we had a guy do that, him and his brother, but all his hand sanitizers, everything, went all the way across the state everywhere. And then they tried to resell it on eBay. eBay shut them down. Then the government came after them for trying to take advantage of the situation, and they ended up giving it all away or risking prosecution, okay? Prosecute, being yeah. prosecuted. So that's what this guy looked at, and they may have even notified him. And instead he tried to get some of his money back by returning it. They wouldn't let him. But what they won't do is let him sell it either. So he just lost out on oh, that they, deal. Uh, no, they won't let him sell it. He will go to jail. They will come and get you trying to do that right now. And I don't know why people, yeah. again, had this thing about toilet paper because I haven't had a problem getting any <laughs> when I go to the store. <laughs> Everybody else seems to think it's the thing to do. All right. Yeah. All, right. All right. Thank All you, right. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Six one zero area code. You are on. Hey, good afternoon, Ray. Hey, good morning, Tony. It's G Man MPA. Hey, sir. Hey, good morning, sir. Good afternoon. All right, thank you, All sir. All right, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, next up is five zero three area code. You are on. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Great. Uh, this is Oregon. And I wanted okay. to, uh, a couple of calls back, you had mentioned that you kind of wanted to hear about some of the plans for when this RV, you know, happens. And so I thought um might be a good opportunity here today to talk about, I know that, the bus lady from Texas <laughs> thinks that, you know, if the RV was going to happen sooner than when everything opens up, that there wouldn't be anything to do with our money. Um, and I think that that's 
not a particularly valid assumption because um, there are places that are open um, and there are things that can be purchased. But more than that, there are um, lots of agencies that are ex that are really struggling right now, um, like the ones that are doing food uh, food deliveries, um, the uh, food banks, and uh, some of the shelters are absolutely struggling um, to survive. They don't have enough money to buy the food, and uh, so. Uh, I know that some of us have talked about, you know, maybe starting nonprofits once we get our funds and, you know, that kind of thing. As someone who's done a lot of nonprofit startups, I would, I would encourage people rather than to try to start a nonprofit because it takes up to three years to get a nonprofit up and running. It's not quick. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that you have to have in place. And the need is so great right now that rather than starting a nonprofit, what my and I'm and like I said, I've started them already, so I know what I'm talking about. My husband and I are going to instead donate to those agencies that are already up and running and are providing services: Salvation Army, Rescue Missions, um, food banks. All of those places have staff in place. They have experience. They know where the needs are, and they know how to spend the money quickly and efficiently. Um, and the sooner we can get that money into their hands, the better all of us will be. Uh, and, uh, you know, people shouldn't have to wait. Um, my experience in going to the bank up here um, some of the Wells Fargo banks have sm the really smaller branches have been closed. Others are others are open. They have uh, staff in place. They have screens up, um, you know, in front of tellers and things like that. Um, they have san hand san sanitizers. It's they're really equipped to keep people safe. And so, um, and I suspect that that um, most of the states are going to open it. I mean, I can't imagine that states have closed banks. If they're closing, I think they're closing on their own initiative, not necessarily according to what the states are saying. And I suspect that they will get, get things in place as well. They may take longer than 10 days to do the whole Internet group, which I always thought was ridiculous in the first place, that time frame was stupid um, you know and they'll lengthen it out but I think there's no reason that I, I think that that needs to be cut off um, because it is a safe place to go safer than a supermarket for sure mm, okay okay you guys hear me Right. Okay. Yes, we do. I just, okay. I just sent you guys a tweet out so everybody can see the budget for themselves. All right. It doesn't matter, guys. You know, I go into the bank now, and they got up those, you know, plastic barriers like they do everywhere. I go into A and P M. They got up the plastic barriers. You go anywhere to the drive-through at fast food restaurants, and they got the plastic barriers. They also still have holes up on them so you can pass things back and forth. They say yeah. currency is the biggest carrier that there is. So, yeah, something is going to have to happen. They're going to have people wearing masks for months to come, not for years, until this is resolved. But none of that has anything to do with the RV itself. What we're talking about is how can the East Coast RV all their currency while the West Coast can't. How can the East Coast go out and say, hey, uh, you know, in, in Georgia and in, in Florida and Virginia, uh, they they reduced our restrictions or released them. So guess what? 
we can all go out. Since Texas is still locked down in California, Washington State, let's all of us go out and get all the contract money because they can't get any because they're still on lockdown and they get used and abused. See, that system doesn't make sense to me. Everybody would have to be able to take uh, an opportunity at the same time to go do what they do. They can't say, oh, now we got to go back, we got to change all the rules, and this state gets this many contracts, this state gets this many, when they don't even know who wants it. But now we have to divide it by states and cities. I don't see that happening. Everybody's going to have to be able to go to the bank at the same time when the revaluation occurs, take advantage of it. And now if they go home with the money and nothing to do with it is one thing, but the fact you're going to have to be able to go. That means all the states are going to have to be open. They're all going to have to have exchange locations open. They're all going to have to have redemption centers with people sitting next to each other working the phones making appointments. That's going to have to happen everywhere at once or it won't work. And I don't think we'll see it until that does happen because you're disadvantaging people any other way. You're letting me know East Coast is going out getting it, and not only that, but now they're driving the price up so for those who didn't get the contract only get the $4 rate, but by the time it gets to California, it's on the market, it's on Forex, and we all just walk right in and get $12, $18, whatever the rate is, with no problem. How is that fair to the East Coast? Those well, things Tony, aren't going to happen. They're not going to make it that difficult. Tony, I don't, my, I, I think my comments were that I don't see that the banks are closed in, in But the banks the are closed. They're not closed where you are. I have people sitting at home, working from home, because they're not working at their job. I have banks right here, right here where I live, where you cannot walk in the bank. They're only taking drive-up and ATM service. So banks are closed. Okay, so you mm -hmm. think so? Okay. Banks are, are are closed for in certain areas of the country because my daughter can go to her bank in in uh, in Texas. Okay, but that's just what I'm saying. Just because one person can do it, they're not going to do it until everybody can do it. Just because okay. you can walk in your local branch doesn't mean they're setting up exchange locations. Because they're not. Well, they may not be setting yeah. up exchange locations, that, but they may you they may not be setting up exchange locations. Or if they were going to set up exchange locations, they would set them up in a different way, um, so that there is sufficient distancing and there's more protections involved. In other words. They may have to lengthen the 10-day thing to like 20 or 30 or 40 days, but that that they would that they they could make accommodations. I I think that's okay. Kind of they may have to do that, and they may plan on doing that anyway because of the changes. It has nothing to do with the RV happening though. It's not going to happen. All those things that you're talking about with them, they're going to do when the banks open. Because it's going to be changed. It's going to be different. They're going to have different precautions. But we got to get to the bank opening first. And that's not going to happen while the virus is out there. It's not going to happen while they're saying gradually reopening the country in hot spots. What do we do in all the dead spots? I don't see that happening. Okay. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That welcome. takes us to... Four two five, Erico, you're on. Well, happy day, guys. Uh, thanks happy for day. having the call today. Um, I have all a right. question. With all of this going on, and and we've skirted around it in in past times about uh, and um, about the rate when it comes out, and of course we're seeing that if the rate comes out 
with uh, uh, the price of oil um, still low. Um, are you going to suggest that we hold off going to the bank, or are you still going to encourage us um, to go to the bank to capture um, the contract rates? Okay. So I will tell you right now, I think everybody should go to the bank and get the contract rate. Because even right now, with oil and it comes only, the contract rate should remain the same because it was a contract agreement and it will always be the highest rate you're ever going to get. So I think you should go get the contract rate. Now, if you don't want to, you don't want to sign the NDA, you still feel it's not worth it to you, if it comes out low because of the price of oil, and I wasn't trying to get the contract rate, this is me. I'm not giving you guys any advice, <laughs> okay? Because I'm not a counselor. I'm telling you what Tony Renfro would do. I would watch the market. I would watch and see what happens on 4X. And it continues to climb. That's when I would go and make my appointment. That's just me, though. Because I'm still trying to get the highest rate I can get. And I know that's the way to do it. If oil is low, it comes out low. Wait until the market drives it up if I don't want the contract rate. Tony, um, what is the likelihood you go to the bank and let's say they give you, they'll agree to give you the contract rate on one of your currencies but not on the others? Are they obliged to give you um, the contract? If they give it to you on one, they'll give it to you on another. And um, as I recall, you also said that there were limits, like, uh, was it on the Zim? I don't remember. Um, that there was a okay. limit that you... Yeah. Ray will tell you guys the limits because he wants to contribute to this. So he'll give you guys the limits. But I will tell you this. My <laughs> banker has told me that if you ask for it, they are told to give it to you if you ask for it. They're supposed to give it to you until it runs out. So, all right, Ray. Ray wants to say Thank something. you. Um, okay, limits twenty million and fifty million. Is that what you want me to say? <laughs> twenty million dinar, fifty million dong. Those are the, the last limits we were given. Twenty million okay. dinar, and twenty million, fifty million on the dong. Yeah. And that's the most you can get on the contract rate. Those were the limits we were then given. Then would you some time back? Okay, so you've got your contract rate taken care of. And the rate generally is so you would reserve um, the what you can't get contract rate on and wait until the market takes it up, right? That's what I would Well, do. you have two options. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Ray. That was it. Oh, you, you can uh, wait till the market takes it up or you can negotiate right there with them. All right? So okay. I'm going to negotiate. I'm saying, look, I'm going to do this, but I got to get to, you know, I, I need at least, you know, I need $6. I need $8. I need $5 because the market is $3 on the rest of this. And remember, I'm going to leave 60%, 70% of it here for two, three years. You're going to give me 10% interest in daily, and we're going to do these deals. You want to do this or not? Because I'm negotiating. If not, I'll take my contract rate. I'll give you this much, and I'm going to take the rest somewhere else, somewhere that's going to negotiate with me other than that rate, that basic 361, if that's what it is. Because I know you have room to play based on how long I leave it here and what you can do with it and the kind of interest that you're going to make. I know because I've been part of TNT. And I know you guys are getting the overnight of this money sitting in the bank, which guarantees you 22% a month, and you're investing my money in other programs, and 
I need a piece of that pie if you want my money. Because there's two things I know I can do. I can give it to you, a big bank, and be a well in the ocean and probably get an app or or I can go one of the smaller banks and be a well sitting in the middle of the lake, the lake drinking all I want to drink because I know they're going to give it to me. I'm dealing with a smaller bank. It's more money for them. They get the same interest you do. Now they make themselves look better with this money, and they're willing to negotiate even more. So those are my options, and I got to sit down and look at it. I like big banks. I like the big opportunities you give me and chances, but I'll go for the guaranteed money down here. And even if I don't, that's how I'm going to present it. And even if they're listening, I don't care because that's still how I'm going to present it. And they go see mm-hmm. which one of us blinks first. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Daddy. All righty. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good Alrighty. weekend. All right. You, you too. too. Thank Bye-bye. you, ma'am. You're welcome. Two zero nine area code. You are on. Good morning and good afternoon. Uh, my good question. Good morning. Is, good morning. At the beginning of the conversation, you said that everybody was getting what they wanted. They were going to go back and put the people into place who they wanted. Does that include Maliki? They're not putting Maliki in place, but they are getting the people they want. Okay, Maliki's not going to be the prime minister. Okay? He's going to hold his position that he holds. He's still a, a government minister and everything, or oh, he's still part of parliament. But that doesn't make him the president, vice president, anything like that. You're talking about. He's not going okay. anywhere. So then he's because he's holding the position he's holding. That means they're not going to help, be able to hold him accountable for all his crimes. They're not going to hold them accountable anyway until the people get what they want, and that is a totally new government. Or until ne- after the next election, if the people can vote somebody in there who's willing to stand up to Iran, that's the only time Malik is going to have a problem, and they vote him out. As long as he's part of parliament, he is safe, because that's what their law says. He's safe as long as he's part of parliament. That's why he's fighting so hard to stay in there. Okay. Well, that was my question. I did want to make a comment, though. Um, G-Man comes on all the time. And he talks about donating. And I do donate. But I'm going to tell you something. I feel kind of guilty because we're on a very fixed income. And I give him several times. But I feel bad every time he talks because I can't give more. Well, don't feel bad. Look, let me tell you something. Guys, we appreciate it all. I mean, we need it because somebody got to pay the bill. Now, if you go and look at Twitter again, I'll say there's 140 something thousand people who follow us on Twitter who listen to our calls. I mean, we get millions of calls throughout the week that people listen to. We have the same hundred, probably same hundred people who donate all the time. It varies somewhere in there. A hundred out of a hundred thousand. That means there's what? Nine hundred thousand people or ninety thousand or who absolutely listen for free. Don't donate, don't help, don't do anything. But they do listen to the call. They do follow on Twitter. So I don't want anybody who can't do it to feel bad because we're here to help as many people as we can anyway, and we're going to continue doing that as long as we can afford to do it. So don't feel bad if you can't, okay, because there's well, plenty of people who can who just don't. Well, I do want okay. to thank you guys. I do appreciate everything that you do do. And then, Ray, I All tried right. to get on your call Sunday for the stock, but you talked so fast I wasn't able to pick. I'm not very Twitter um, savvy. So I was trying to take notes. Is there a way you could give that information, like on a Twitter or something, to walk us through how to get on there? You were on the call? 
I was listening to the call that Sunday, but you had given information about signing into Twitter. So I, I was confused. I'm sorry. I was just confused. Okay. Of what I was supposed to do. All right. All right. Okay. Can you tell people how to follow us on Twitter right now? I am nope. on Twitter, but it was for his stock call that we called in. Right. Oh, 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 the one that you're not supposed to talk about on TNT? Oh, oh. okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we started a stock club so we could learn about stocks. <laughs> And so, so that's all it is. It's not no one's ever giving any advice for stocks to buy. It's just learning the mechanics of the of the situation. Right. And there's a lot of folks that, that just want to learn and understand that, so they can feel comfortable if they want to jump into the market. But you said you were on the Correct. on the stock call Sunday. I was. I found the phone number and called the phone number and put in the code. Is that all I have to do every Sunday? Yes. Okay, now I gotta go back and find it. Is it gonna be the same number every Sunday? Yes. Okay, then I'll go back and try and find it. Um, at- if you are if you if you go on Twitter, you can go to um, Network Shift and follow. Then you get the text message and the playback numbers because the calls are recorded now on Sundays, so you can listen to them. That's Network Network Shift. One word. S H I F T dot com. No, no, Net. Twitter. Go to Twitter and then look up Network Shift. Twitter dot oh, okay. com, Network Shift, and then follow. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Sorry, I brought it up right. in the wrong place. Bye, guys. Well, okay. Thank you. It's, alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye. Hey. I, I, I didn't even learning. know about it. So <laughs> wait. I, I didn't even know he was letting people in on it. But. I've never even uh, been part of it. See, now you told me how I can get on. Okay. I'm going to check it out. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You remember that day I was, like, trying to tell you, and you were, like, like, you were, like trying not to hear it? So I said, okay, I won't beat anybody over the head with it. And uh... <laughs> All right, 702, Eric code, oh. you're on. I do remember yeah, that day. You trying to get me to go sign up for something. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, you said, okay, I'll take a look at it. I said, all right, let me know what you find out. And that was the last we talked about it. Uh, hello. See everybody. Right. Good morning. Right, everybody the same way. <laughs> all right, 702. <laughs> hello? Yes, hello. Yeah, good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ray. Good morning, uh, Tony. Hi there. So oh. how's it going? Everything? I'm super fantastic. How are you doing? Fantabulous, sir, to the nth degree. I do both of them. Great okay. and not great. So I, right. I wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you, you have a your opinion for five months, and what is the mean five months? What is it, Hello? five months? Is that what yeah, you said? Yeah, because you oh, repeat okay. five months, five months on the beginning. Yeah, I also just sent you guys out a tweet on Twitter so everybody can read it where they said they're going to approve the 2020 budget for five months. So if you, everybody just got a tweet, you should have got it. The article's right there. It tells you exactly what they're talking about. They've been operating on the 112, but they're going to approve this budget. So it'll take about a month after the president or the prime minister is, is, is nominated. Parliament should hold the budget about a month, and then they're going to approve it for five months for the remainder of the year, the 2020 budget. If that happens, if they pick the prime minister on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, they're saying the budget should come out in May. And it should be for five months. So I have a way of okay. looking at it. If it's effective okay, in May, question. it goes to October. If it, they come up with a budget and say it's not effective till August, 
it goes through the end of December. So they said five months. So we'll see. Okay. My opinion is must be this is a boycott for all of this financial reset. Because for the beginning, Russian collusion with here, impeachment, coronavirus, and all of that stuff. I think uh, Iraq uh, with Maliki, they start to help for, for the bad way. So what is the mean all about it? Why they not open this money? Why are they not talking this month? Why they not open this money? They need some more five months. It's not enough 15 years. Oh. Uh, I can't hardly understand what you're saying, but I think you're saying why are they not using the money for the entire year instead of five months? Yeah, because we're waiting 15 years. And they wanted more <laughs> five months. What is the mean? Okay, oh, okay. Oh, Let me see. We've been waiting for 15 years, and why are they only going to do this for five months instead of the whole year? I think that's what you're asking. So, yeah. because they're saying because of the price of oil, what's going on in the global economy, they just want to do it for five months, which I thought should be the end of their fiscal year. Now, somebody sent me a chart that the CIA has, and it says the end of their fiscal year is December 31. They go with the calendar year, not fiscal year like we do, which means if they were doing that, then this budget wouldn't be activated until August if they say it's through the end of the year. But if they're saying they're just trying to put out something for the next five months, because and it's a temporary budget, not the complete budget. Well, since 2020 budget, then they're doing it just because of the price of oil, and that's where they want to work at. So I wish I could answer your question, but I truly can't. Yeah. I just have to look at it, try and put the pieces of the puzzle together until we get some more information. So far, they just came out with this this morning. So I haven't talked to my CBI contact or people in Iraq yet so we can figure out exactly what this is even though what came with it they're, they're just trying to pay their bills and have salaries for the rest of the year or for those five month period of time now hold on everybody because this is what we do know for a fact Iraq is just like a bunch of people that you all know you all know personally they will say one thing and do something else, okay? You know people, like, we know Iraq is like that. They will say one thing and do something totally different. So we have to wait and see what they do. The good news is Prime Minister next week, budget by the middle of May. That's what we should see. Tony. Yes, ma'am. I think, okay. I think uh, Iraq just waiting on the United States. United States, if you say open, Iraq, they're going to be agreed. Well, I think they're going to agree, too, because there's more money as soon as they yeah, can. absolutely. But the U.S. is not the only factor. The IMF is still playing this game, guys. World Bank is still playing this game. UK is still playing. They're all in it, but they all can veto. The U.S. is just the only country that keeps vetoing it. Everybody else would have let it go in 2014. We were the only ones against it. Everybody else was for it. Everybody else was for it last year. We were the only ones against it. But we hold a veto power, and that's what has been stopping it. But they hold veto power should something else happen. But everybody's been agreeing. I think right now for the global economy, just like we're letting this prime minister go, just like we know there's going to be a lot of Iran's picks in there, the U.S. is finally letting it go for the greater good and saying, okay, we'll let it go, but we'll increase the sanctions. We'll tell Iraq they can no longer get electricity from Iran 
and we gave them six months to find somebody else. We'll change the game. And that way, okay. if they're not importing, exporting, Iran's not getting the money anyway because we shut down the well. So there's another way to fight the game, and we've decided to do that. Very good. You know what? I don't say like this. Let's go. We're going to pay for our government to open because they power, and they're going to do it. God okay. bless everybody. God bless America. All right. Thank okay, you. Thank you. You too. Kevin? Nothing wrong with prayer. I'm telling you that. I tell people all the time, I, sir, I can use all the prayer I can get. Go ahead. All right. It's wrapping up time. Oh. oh even it. even oh, though I don't I have anywhere not. that I can go, I can still act like I have somewhere to go. You know, it's the weekend. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, unlike you and a whole lot of other people, I got somewhere to go, and I'm going. So anyway, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> so, anyway, the rest of y'all stay at home. That means I can go out and be safe. So I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So let's go with that one. <laughs> All right, guys. It's all good news, though. It just depends on how you look at it. Things are moving. They're still going forward. Nobody's saying negative stuff. And we finally come to an end. I mean, we've been going months saying, when will this end? When will it end? It's going to end on May the 12th, one way or another. And now they're telling us they want to do it before Ramadan. And now they're telling us they're going to do it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. So one way or another, it is definitely coming to an end. And life will be different than what we've ever thought it was going to be, first of all. Or even imagined that it would be under certain circumstances. But for us. It's still going to be a good life compared to what everybody else is going through. So uh, each one reach one to teach one. Help somebody else enjoy this. Try to explain it to somebody else why they have the opportunity to change their life right now. I know people got $1,200 checks deposited yesterday. I know people got $1,200 checks deposited the day before yesterday. I know checks are in the mail even though they got stopped, so they might be a little bit late. But all those people who got that $1,200 deposit, and you know them, and they waited, try to convince them, at least tell them and say that. I still had people last week saying, Tony, I didn't know this was you. I just found out this was you. Why you didn't tell me about this years ago? Why you haven't never mentioned this to me? And I'm still saying, I tell everybody, if the subject comes up a little bit, I tell them, because of this reason, I don't want you to say why you didn't tell me once it happened, because I did tell you, and you and you and you and you. That's what I'm doing. Right now, people are sitting at home with nothing to do, just got a $1,200 deposit. Tell them to go online. They don't want to leave home. Go online. Travel X will sell you $50 worth of dong online. Currency holders will sell you $100, $200 worth of dinar online. It will be delivered to them in the security of their home, and they have still changed their future for after this happens. Convince people to spend $50 or $200 or $1,200 on their future future of their family and their legacy. That's what I would ask you to do. If you had nothing else to do, you're sitting at home anyway. Pick up the phone. Call a friend. Change his future. All right, more importantly, enjoy your day and weekend. I'm going to enjoy mine. All right, Ray. All right, that's going to do it for this week, ladies and gents. We'll return Monday on our regularly scheduled time. And in the meantime, in between time, keep believing. We sure do.